one of the traps of our disciplines that, that is, seems to me inherent in the nature of software is that we are we are often inches away from some quite deeply complicated problems. Yeah. Whatever the level of abstraction that we're working at almost, as soon as you have to, it seems to me fundamental that, that as soon as you have two pieces, two copies of information in separate places that are changing independently, you've got a world-class, first-class quantum physics level problem. You know, this is hard stuff. However, you know, whatever the nature of the information, however it is that you deal with it, um, working on high performance systems along with Martin building exchanges and, and, and trading systems and stuff. You know, the co- we, we measured the costs of concurrency locks, you know, uh, uh, um, compare and swap operations in, you know, yeah. in, in processes and all those kinds of things to try and optimize the performance of our systems. And, that, you know, one of the things one of the things that I've observed is that the more that people know about concurrent building concurrent systems, the more their advice is don't do it unless you can possibly avoid it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That, and and, that- <laughs> you know, this is this is incredible incredibly difficult stuff so you know things like adding synchronization blocks and saying everybody can now in java can write threads or having thousands uh, thousands of um, uh, um, uh, locks in in your c++ uh, program are all seems to me symptoms of not realizing that this is a this is a point to stop and think hard because this requires hard thinking yeah. this is a, this is a difficult part and, yeah. and, and I, it seems to me that concurrency and coupling are the kind of the the really yeah. hard parts of our discipline yeah i, I think so because i think one there's the because again c- coupling is and, and what's inter- actually it's interesting you draw those two together because i think the interesting about coupling is that it's is um concurrency is hard to it's hard for us to reason about and conceptualize. Yes. Um, um, uh, coupling suffers a different problem, um, um, but interesting. But both of both, of them, which I find fascinating, both of them manifest themselves physically um, uh, in, in terms of concurrency is about structuring things in time. Um, yes. But if somebody says, "Well," How tightly coupled is this code base? I tell you what, let me do a build. Yeah. <laughs> well, let, well, you know, uh, you can, you know, in other words, you can actually measure the energy of a build, um, and yeah. it's one of those things uh, that uh, I remember turning uh, turning up at a particular. It was a it was a it was a, an engineering project, um, uh, electricity company. Multiple companies were subcontracting. It was a political nightmare. It was just pure Conway all the way through, um, but in the in the in the in the failure mode, um, and yeah. it was a, it was a political nightmare um, and uh, all kinds of fascinating things. But one of the most interesting things was, as a development team, um, uh, the team that I was working with, uh, uh, what we were working on was very much back end stuff. It was much more towards the hardware. It was the real time stuff, but it was kind of like, we felt like we came out of our cave to go and speak to these other people. It's just, yeah. oh my goodness, this is absolute enterprise chaos. Um, um, and, and, and then we, what was funny is that because we were building for multiple environments, we were building for 32 and 64 bit environments. We were building for um, slow environments uh, as well as environments where we had uh, high powered CPUs and as we had a framework that was supposed to work everywhere. But the embedded environment, oh my goodness, the builds on that were so incredibly slow that we really, we cared about dependencies at such a level so that yeah. we had fast builds, which meant when we ran it on a 64 bit platform, it was practically instantaneous. It was, it was yeah. a beautiful side effect. But then we encountered all these other people who were just doing all kinds of stuff with their code. And this was like, I'm going to call it C plus most of what they were writing um, because it, it was clearly using a C plus plus compiler, but I don't think it got much beyond C. Yeah. Um, and but the the way they managed their dependencies or didn't, uh, everything depended on everything else, and the build times were staggering and shocking. Um, uh, we ended up building an isolation layer between our company and the rest um, as a result because it's just like we got so used to fast build times um, on these platforms. Yeah, and it's just that idea of like, yeah, I can, you know. How good is your coupling? I can either measure it in joules or I can actually time it. You see, yes. you know, it's kind of like, you know, our builds take a lot less time than your builds um, yes. because we've got really, we've we've stripped it right down. What is essential? So there's a physical aspect there, but it's not, you know, and again, concurrency is this physical one, but concurrency we find difficult to reason about because having so many things in motion is not a 
it's not a strength of human beings. But mm. coupling is is more a sense of scale. Is once we've un, you know, it's that idea of like there's so a large system is like really understanding what a tangle looks like, really understanding yes. that this dependency means that. And they are both limits. We are limited by what goes on up here, and what, but in slightly different ways with those two. But I think you're right that they are fundamental. They are. They remind us. Uh, they remind us of some of the physics that we do encounter in the universe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and coupling certainly entropy in the build. Um, but concurrency is uh, is that point where your idealization lands in the real world and sometimes it reveals assumptions i've certainly had that with with one client they i remember they uh, one one client we did this kind of surgery uh, style thing you know i had a couple of days there i ran some training then i had a couple of days and people would book a morning or an afternoon and kind of i'd, I'd go mm-hmm. with the team and i had one one team say oh well yeah an hour of your time this morning would be great i said well no, no you can have the full three hours and they said no no we won't need that they walked in and i remember asking a particular question i said you know, looking at the code they were going through, and uh, I said, um, uh, oh, so how many threads run through this piece of code? Because I was aware they were using threading. How many threads mm-hmm. run through this piece of code? And there are a number of correct answers to this. Um, zero um, is a valid answer, which means this code is dead. Uh, one <laughs> is also a valid answer, and many is also a valid answer. I didn't get that. All I got is usually one. And I said, Ah, oh, that's interesting. What do you mean by usually <laughs> one? Why would you not say that's many? As far as I'm concerned, that's many. Yeah. Oh, you, well, what we, what we have is we have a it, it's single threaded, except a you know so, oh this is single threaded code, Kevin. Except occasionally another thread will just sneak into this bit here. They don't. It's just like threads don't sneak. It's like, how should you just work? And, and they had this mental model of threading that was not actually how threading works. They had kind of thought that threading respected the natural boundaries of the language and statements yeah. and blocks and things like that. Yeah. Um, and and they had and, and they said, well, it only happens occasionally. I said, well, you know, you only need to fail occasionally. You know, there's, there, I said, there's a race condition waiting to happen here because you see you load this and then you validate this here. What if something else sneaks in at this point and you've got an unvalidated bit? It's just like, yeah. and it's kind of like one person looked at another and said, you know, that might explain this intermittent bug we've been having. And, 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 and they said, what, what, what should we do? Should we add locks everywhere? And I said, no, 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 no. Actually, what you need to do is take take a step back here. You're, the problem is not to add, but actually to sort of say, well, why are you doing this? What they were doing was a lazy load. Yeah. And 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 it's a case of like, why are you doing the lazy load here? And they said, well, I, we don't you know. The reasons are lost to time. But I said, because the problem goes away if you do an eager load. If you do an eager load before it goes multi-threaded, then the data you're looking at is actually immutable. You, it's reference yeah. data. Yeah. It's the load that is the state change. And yeah. I said, it, let's do let's do the opposite way. Rather than add locks, let's take a step back. I mean, honestly, given enough time, I would have removed all the threads from this application. It was not a threaded yeah. application, but but it was a case of you know actually take the opposite view. Um, this is a question of time. You're doing the load at the wrong time. You're do, you're, mm-hmm. You should be doing the load before you go multi-threaded. And if you do that, yeah, yeah. then the problem solves itself. But it's that shift in time and perspective. But my favorite bit, again, to do with time, was when, when, the, when the lead in the room said, you know, we might need more than that one hour, Kevlin, now. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I said, do you have more code like this? It's just like, yeah. But again, it's because it's not... And it's not to criticize because that's the whole point. It goes back to something I said earlier. We are always operating with incomplete knowledge and we are built filled with assumptions. Yeah. Until you've actually run into those, you don't realize what you're missing. Um, and you and you don't realize the magnitude of either how well you've done something or actually how wrong you've understood something. So, oh, actually, no, I'm using completely the wrong mental model for thinking about yeah. this. And that, that mental model um, has informed how I've structured the software. You know, the software is kind of like applied thought and that mental model, it's, it's off. And to, we, so that's the squishy human bit. That's the learning bit, but it's also the bit we need to be more, we need to sort of say, yeah, we need to have a, a bigger process that is tolerant of the fact that we are imperfect and that yes. we can't know everything. And that's the whole point. This team had not really interacted with that and had not accommodated that idea at, at that level. And most teams I don't think have. I think it's a very difficult thing for us to do. It's almost against the culture and the nature of software d- uh, development in many companies. Oh, I, I, I think you're absolutely right. And, and, and forgive me bringing it back around to, to, to my stuff, but, but I, I think that's one of the things that 
treating this more like an engineering discipline ought to be able to give us is just mm. those is just those disciplines of just being able to just recognizing that we don't know the answers when we're starting yeah. out recognizing that we're probably not going to be right Re- therefore working more experimentally therefore working to control yeah. manage the complexity of the systems that we build and to measure things and to try stuff out and, and all of those sorts yeah. of things that you know Test driven development is certainly part of that yeah. for me d- deeply, but um, but but I, I think that mindset is so important. Well, what one of the other kind of deep properties it seems to me of software is that it's unlike lots of other things, it, it's actually very easy to start. You can learn you can learn to write mm. your first simple lines of code in you know a few minutes if you've done a little bit of algebra at least. It's mm. trivial to just do. You know your first easy trivial bits of code but it's deceptive because you know you don't go very far before you get into some of these more complicated things that we've been talking yeah. about and yeah, and I as you say yeah. you know, it, as soon as soon as you start thinking like things like concurrency that's really hard for the best people in the world 